Gaming Bolt presents 15 things hardcore players hate about Fallout 76. It's been a week since Bethesda's Fallout 76 officially launched. Though impressions from fans have been mixed during the beta, most or at least those who are vocally the loudest in the community have panned the game for its various issues. What are some of the biggest problems that hardcore fans have with Fallout 76? Let's take a look at 15 of them here. Yes, just the 15, for now. Boring quest design. Let's start off with the obvious. The quest design isn't very good. The world seems to consist entirely of the same types of quests, and while that could be said for many games at the end of the day, Fallout 76 doesn't have the benefit of memorable characters or interesting plot lines to break the monotony. You go somewhere and pick up some stuff like bottles, or you shoot some scorched or super mutants or random nonsense. You're told to meet someone, go to the location, they're dead, and you pick up their holotape to do something. Rinse, wash, repeat. And no, the timed events don't offer much more variety. Boring plot. An open world setup with something like find your father or find your son is pretty cliche for sure. However, previous Fallout games use these as decent jumping off points to immerse you in their respective settings. Fallout 3 has slightly succeeded in that, better than Fallout 4, but the point is that some effort was made in both instances. Fallout 76 is simply about leaving the vault, finding the overseer, kind of doing your own thing, who knows? Oh, and go launch a nuke, why don't you? People like nukes, right? Even if you argue that shared world always online titles don't need compelling stories, Fallout 76 is exceptionally lazy in this regard. Holotapes One thing it's not lazy about telling is its stories through holotapes. Again, this wasn't a major problem in previous games because there were characters and an overarching plot to lend personality to the world. The holotapes alone just don't cut it. On top of that, in Fallout 76, they're long. Like, exceptionally, painfully long. It becomes tough to pay attention to them while doing other things, especially when they're randomly cut off in between. And no, you can't fast forward them. Lack of NPCs the lack of any non-playable characters in Fallout 76 was justified as offering a way for other players to roleplay. They could thus fill the roles of any NPCs you would normally meet in other Fallout titles. The problem with this approach is the maximum number of people in a server is pretty small, with the map itself being pretty big, thus making those empty stretches all the more empty. Also, you're not always guaranteed to run into people, some players have reported going for numerous play sessions without seeing anyone. Finally, NPCs aren't just there for laughs. They provide deeper context to a player's world, serving as linchpins for its construction. Without other characters and the various interlinking stories behind them, the world just feels lifeless, and no amount of role-playing from random players met online or holotapes will fix that. Combat and Vats Combat in Fallout 4 was better than its predecessors, but it still didn't hold a candle to other first-person shooters. Melee combat was also pretty clunky, and while it was annoying at the time, at least there were other things to distract us. Not so in Fallout 76. With all the NPCs gone and stories relegated to holotapes, combat is front and center, and the clunkiness is much worse than in 2015. Furthermore, VATS has been butchered to act as nothing more than some lame auto-aiming system. There's no skill ceiling or deeper mechanics to really invest in either. Enemy AI The infamous T-Pose is becoming even more infamous thanks to Fallout 76. It's not strange to see the Scorched just standing around like this, apparently numb to the world. They'll stand around, not reacting to your presence at all, get caught on objects, fail to mount inclines, and so on and so forth. It only adds to the woesome combat even more. Terrible UI Ah, the user interface. It's so poorly optimized for both consoles and PCs that it's not even funny. All consumables are on a single screen. All weapons, ammo, and throwing weapons are on a single screen. If these sound like problems that were already present in Fallout 4, that's because they were. If anything, they're more pronounced here because the survival aspects require you to constantly open up your menu and manage resources. 
Unlike in Fallout 4 though, the game doesn't pause while this is all happening. Dying in the midst of rifling through your inventory is very much possible. Building controls on consoles haven't really been optimized well. Though PC and console users are both equally cursed when it comes to the UI, it seems that consoles have it worse when it comes to building. The control setup doesn't feel properly tuned to console players. Instead of a grid-based system for structures, you need precise control and aiming for placing things. Though this is fine on a mouse, it can be pretty clumsy on the controller. As such, building has its share of issues like bases disappearing, floating in the air and whatnot, but this just makes the process even more painful. World PvP If you thought terrible combat and bad AI were annoying, then rest assured that World PvP is the absolute pit. Picture this. You're trying to pick a fight with someone in the open world. You do very little damage unless they attack back or invite you to a duel. So it's not weird to see someone casually set up a bunch of turrets and then fight back with a massive advantage at the outset. Then there's the revenge mechanic. If you kill someone in a PvP fight, they have the option to teleport back to you and continue fighting. This can be abused continuously by the other person to just keep harassing the same player, such as, say, when they're in their menu screen. No dedicated PvP servers, the same clunky combat that has no skill ceiling or deeper mechanics, and the lack of rewards for PvPers in general only add to the mess. Hunter Hunted Radio But wait, you say, you can queue up for squad-based PvP separately using the Hunter Hunted Radio? Yeah, no. Not only are there very few people actually playing it, but the same problems with combat, the lack of any rewarding mechanics to master, and no real PvP rewards don't help. Your experience may vary, but for all intents and purposes, Fallout 76 is the last game you'd want to play PvP in. Lackluster Endgame Okay, so forget PvP. You'll engage in this whole wide world of PvE. Bethesda did promise over 150 hours of side content after all. Unfortunately, not only is the side content repetitive and uninspired, while the timed events are pretty boring, but there's not much of an endgame either. You get high-level power armor and weapons, launch some nukes, fight high-level enemies at the irradiated site like the Scorch Beast Queen, and that's about it. Then you do the same thing again and again and again. You'd think Bethesda of all developers would find a way to create a compelling endgame for players who are at max level. Either it didn't think they would get to the nuke so quickly, or it simply didn't have enough time to implement more endgame content. Whatever the case may be, Fallout 76 feels even more barren as a result. Reused animations and assets, without any fixes. A good number of animations and assets have been reused from Fallout 4, which is fine. Sure, some people may not like it at all, but Bethesda announced beforehand that Fallout 76 was built using assets from Fallout 4. The problem is when some of the animations weren't even fixed. Remember when lever action rifles in Fallout 4 would reload every single bullet during the animation, even if you just fired one bullet? Well, that's still present. The game may look prettier thanks to its setting, but animation-wise, it's still pretty awkward. Bugs, 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 bugs. Bethesda's recent patch corrected some issues here and there, but the sheer number of bugs in this game is incredible. If it's not enemies glitching out or failing to respond, then it's the game crashing, disconnecting or struggling with its performance, or all three if you're lucky. Or you could lose a stack of fusion cores when entering power armor as they merge into one fusion core. Or items could be lost when another player builds their camp in the same location as yours. Bethesda already has a sordid reputation for buggy games, and Fallout 76 is perhaps its worst example yet. Perks not working. Oh, and adding to the list of bugs is the fact that some perks don't even work sometimes. Action Boy, which helps regenerate action points faster, won't work sometimes. Lucky Break, which provides a slight chance that your armor will repair itself when struck, doesn't work sometimes. The worst part is that there could be many other bugs in the other perk cards that simply haven't been discovered yet. 
What's the point in build diversity and character customization when the reliability of certain perks is doubtful? On a side note, why isn't respecking special points available at launch, especially when they're tied to the perk cards you can equip? Load times on consoles. On top of everything else, the bugs, the glitches, the performance problems, terrible gameplay, boring quests, lackluster endgame, and so on and so forth, Fallout 76 is absolutely abysmal when it comes to loading times on consoles. It takes forever. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily, so make sure you don't miss them by subscribing. We appreciate your support and we thank you for checking us out.